Greetings, it is I, Category Jinro, your resident werewolf VTuber, and welcome back to the Moonlight Brew, where we serve coffee as well as adult beverages. However, tonight, we are not at the Moonlight Brew, we are in the movie theater for our ninth movie watch along. I know it's been a while since we've actually watched a movie together. I actually kind of found a movie I actually really wanted to watch with these guys for a while, so... Tonight, we are going to be watching a cult classic from 1987 called Munchies. Munchies is basically supposed to be like a Gremlins ripoff because back in like 1986-87, Gremlins was an incredibly popular film with mass audiences. So a lot of studios were trying to capitalize on the success of those type of creature films. So most of you might remember a filmmaker by the name of Roger Corman. He decided that he was going to, well, not necessarily him, but the studio approached him to make a movie called Munchies. They wanted him to make his own type of um, type of creature, gremlins, knockoff, and he was tasked with that. It was a very, very low budget film, so to speak, very modest budget. The film does feature some people who have been featured in our movies, most particularly the female lead character is played by the same person who did the daughter sister in the movie critters which came out way before this particular film also roger corman's brother harvey corman actually stars in this film as well so that's a little fun tidbit he actually plays two different roles in this film uh, which you'll see in a second as with all movie watch alongs i am not legally allowed to show the movie on stream you will have to have it queued up on your end. I did provide people with links to where you can watch it. I'm going to be watching it on Tubi. So if you want to watch it in sync with me, we're going to be watching on Tubi. However, I will give you a little bit of caution that there will be at least maybe six ads during this movie watch along. Um, that's just kind of how Tubi operates. And I do have a Blu-ray copy of this film, but I figured most people wouldn't be able to have access to something of that nature. So we have to find something where people would be able to be able to watch it and you know, affordable. Even if we were watching this on Amazon Prime, we would not be able to watch it without ads because now you have to even pay for ads on movies on Amazon Prime. Just kind of lame, but hey, you know, advertisers got to pay the bill. So I will be obviously reacting to it. So we're going to do a countdown from 10. We're going to press play on the movie. Right now, I have it set up on my Tubi where it's paused at 0000. And 32 minutes of commercials originally, it's like an hour and 24 without so we're going to do countdown from ted starting now 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 press play All right concord release let me make sure that the desktop audio is muted on my end okay it is okay sweet so this is starting with him kind of parroting Star Trek. I guess he was a Star Trek fan. Interesting. Oh, well, that's Harvey Corman already. Roger Corman's brother. This is one of the roles he plays. Let me loud up the volume, my man. It's a little low for me. This movie's very old, by the way. So some things in terms of like style that people wear, the clothing, and just some of the things that they say might be outdated by today's standards. Interesting. That's a little too loud. Let me load down a little bit. So this is our main character, the lead. He's making apparently a video for his uh, girlfriend, trying to be a stand-up comedian. Huh. Look at his jacket that he's wearing right now. Now keep in mind, back then, uh, Back to the Future, Michael J. Fox character Mario McFly was very, very popular. In audiences so that's why he's clearly wearing that jacket Ooh, his father's tearing into his career choices i mean we've all been there right we've had parents tear into our career choices anybody that's a youtuber even knows that one right <laughs> oh look at this oh man they're literally just playing a negative stereotype and they found something what did they find are they supposed to be like Ancient Mayan figures? Oh, we actually got somebody who looks like either an Aztec or Mayan. Machu Picchu? So, 
they're warning them not to mess around with this particular area. This ritual, I guess, temple of some sort. This guy, Ramon, is playing a really, really bad stereotype. So they're going to go look for something. Well, one thing you'll notice about this movie is the dialogue is incredibly corny. But that's kind of Roger Corman's style. He does, like, cult, classic B-rated movies. So they're not known for a lot of great character development and great dialogue, necessarily. It's more about the special effects. Hey, speaking of special effects, the movie is kind of giving an echo, man, but it's because I have Sonic Studios on, which kind of enhances things when I'm watching videos. Uh, not videos, but watching movies. Uh, not movies, watching... We're playing video games, I should say. What's happening? Oh, something was hiding in the background. What was that? It's like a creature of some sort. Oh, Inte. Not to be confused with Entei from Pokemon, although that's where it's influence from, the Sun God. Hmm. I will say that the sound on this particular movie is a little confusing. It goes up and down on this TV. But actually put back Sonic Studio so it sounded... Some... Oh, look! What was that? It's a little creature that was hiding in the corner. Uh-oh. What's going on? What is it? There's like some type of creature in this temple, it seems. Well, clearly Paul is not very brave, but his father, being an archaeologist, is pretty comfortable looking for danger. What is that? Oh, look at that. It's a little creature of some sort. He speaks Spanish. He called him Amigo, did he not? Oh, look at that. He's so cute. The dad thinks that it's an alien, though. Why would it be an alien? Is it a dad obsessed with aliens? What is he? Oh, so he thinks Machu Picchu was a place for aliens. That's not the most sane plot, but I guess so. So he's just going to take this creature out of the temple? Didn't they warn on the writings on this temple that don't disrupt this temple? I would assume don't take this creature, right? They're going to put him in a gym bag? Man, that's torture for the poor little guy, isn't it? This poor little guy. He's going to get stuffed into a gym bag. Why are you giving him chocolate? You don't even know if he, like, he could get poisoned like a dog or a cat from eating chocolate. And how is he going to have an air supply? What's he going to do? He's got a giant's hat on. Ooh. Why is he picking up that stuff? Uh-oh. He went in the bag. They kind of lured him. They should not be taking him home with him. They don't even know what type of rabies this guy got to have, potentially. That's it? They're just leaving? This this guy knows something's not right. What's he going to do? Bribe the workers. Why did they run away screaming? Why would they run away screaming? I don't understand. What happened outside? Oh, he fished the candy already. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, in terms of sound design, they didn't do anything with that particular scene. All you hear is the echoes from it. All right, so we have the title screen here, Munchies. Interesting. As you can see, the little creature thing is going to have a kind of a knacker craving for a lot of food. So this is starring Harvey Corman who is Roger Corman's brother, Charles Stratton, who played in a couple decent films, not a really big film career. Nadine Vander Velde, she was the one who played in Critters. She actually was pretty popular back then, co-starring Alex Elias. I was not very familiar with his work. Charlie Phillips, again, not somebody I was really, truly familiar with their work. Hardy Rawls. A lot of people that were in this film were not major actors. Like, the biggest land for them was Nadine, because Nadine, like, Nobody was really expecting her back then to do this movie, especially after Critters. Casting by Gary M. Zuckerberg. Munchies created by Robert Short. So it was only one person who was created. Uh, the creature effects for this. Production design, Robert Schulenberg. Not familiar with their work as well. Music composed by Ernest V. Troost. 
That person actually had a decent film career with music. Edited by James A. Stewart. Director of photography, Jonathan West. Screenplay by Lance Smith. You would think Roger Corman would have actually been the one that did the screenplay, but no. Co-produced by Guinea Nugent. Produced by Roger Corman. Yeah, Roger Corman didn't direct this film. Directed by Bettina Hirsch. I was always wondering what would happen if Roger Corman actually directed the film. So we already got our first commercial not very far into it. So we got it like a 90 second break here. But we can just kind of chat here while we wait for the commercial to finish since these commercials kind of suck. So as you can see, very early on into the film, uh, creature effects are going to be a lot of puppetry, a lot of practical effects. In terms of the acting, nothing really necessarily solid. Harvey Corman, who we saw play the scientist slash archaeologist slash dad, uh, he's kind of been around in the business for a while. Uh, it's did a lot of appearances in a lot of his brother, Roger Corman's films. So we're back away from a very small commercial break. They smuggled him into the airport. Well, oh, oh. he actually thinks that it's was actually like a customs person, but that's his girlfriend. That's Nadine. She was a very popular actress back in the mid to late eighties. Uh, the dad approves of her. Oh. He made a tape? Oh, that's right. That was a tape he was recording. Were the Giants? They won. Were the Giants really good back then? I don't remember. Interesting. That's why he likes her as a girlfriend for his son. Because they're fans of baseball. Oh, wow. He's getting all of the suitcases. Ah, huh? interesting. She, that's a good girlfriend, Wolfies. She literally went to pick them up at the airport and drive them back home. Interesting. Interesting. Look at the Jeep that they were. You could tell this movie in terms of production values, they didn't have a lot of very high production values. Because look, like, that's a real scene, but the sound effects are not really good. They're not really using a lot of good microphones. Uh-oh. Why is he playing with a sock? Not a puppy. Not even an anteater. No. The dialogue is not necessarily great in this film. I used to watch this um, way, way back in the day. It was hard to actually find it. Welcome to Sweetwater. So that's the name of the place. Uh-oh. What happened? She broke, uh, broke something. Uh-oh. She was speeding. Oh, no. It's a goofy cop. What horror film is without a goofy car, right? Uh-oh. She's speeding. She's getting a ticket, isn't she? Wow, he's just waiting for somebody to bust there. That poor cop has no life, does he? Well, she's gonna have to pull over. Almost certainly. Gotta obey the traffic laws, right, Wolfies? We know this from American Truck Simulator. Look at that. He even put on the glasses. He's trying to go old machismo cop here. It's probably like a tiny little deputy. He even forgot the stuff that he needs. Oh, geez. Well, we've just been introduced to our inept cop. He's trying to play it so cool. He's trying to be a bad cop. Look at that. It's more like a guy dressed up in a cop cosplay. It would be like, what if Category Jinro was dressed as a cop, right? He's getting sussed. What's up with that guy's lip? Did you notice that? Did he get punched before this movie? Oh, he's gonna be a jerk. Um, looks like Deputy Sport got punched in his mouth before this. <laughs> Either that or he's got a really bad uh fever blister, it looks like. Uh-oh. He's gonna harass her. Look at that. His badge on his hat doesn't even fit right. Oh, jeez. Look at his hat. He gave her a ticket. That's funny. But look at his hat. Like, the badge isn't even properly put on. It's not supposed to be pointed up that way. Well. Oh, people are probably wondering where they are in terms of location of the film. So they left the Machu Picchu site for a place called 
Melvis lands. Well, that's not technically the place. It's called Sweetwater. Sweetwater is basically Cal uh, area in California for the movie. I don't know if there's actually Sweetwater in California. I have to actually look that up. Oh, he's being spied on already. Who's he being spied on? Is car sick? Oh, look at that. Does that guy look familiar to Wolfies? It, it should be because that guy is the same guy who plays the archaeologist slash scientist. That's still Harvey Cor uh Harvey Corbin. Interesting. Wow. He had like actual things. Evis? Oh, so his girlfriend decided to become vegetarian. Interesting. He's gonna teach him to watch TV. What is that? Look at that green screen, man. I think we have better green screening technology here at the Moonlight Brew Wolfies. Cecil's all natural wine co wine coolers. That's right. Wine coolers were really popular back in the day, Wolfies. It's very interesting to see them. That's his uncle. Oh, he's learning how to talk. Treats. What type of treats does she give him? Where are they? Potato chips? What is that? I mean, why is he in the bag? Finding out about... Uh, I guess he's worried that his scientific discovery is going to be solved. Hmm. Well, look at that. Our first real look at uh, Amigo, as he's called in the movie. Well, as you can tell from their dialogue, they have been together as a uh, boyfriend and girlfriend quite a while. Oh, he's got it a new name. He's Munchie. You're going to call him Arnold? He's got a, a whole spy set up for his, his brother? That's crazy. Why is he staying at the hotel? Lecture. Uh, uh, he's got a scientific lecture to go to. The little guy. Yes. He's going to tell him about it. Interesting. So, I guess the reason he's going is because the guy is a fan of aliens as well. Oh, he wants a publisher for his book. Oh, the household has money troubles. I see, I see. I mean, it is pretty hard to rent houses in California. Oh, so he's gonna... He's gonna have tasked with having to babysit the little guy. You're gonna bet? What's the wager? And what does... If he wins, what happens? So he's gotta let him be a comedian in LA? And if he loses, he has to go to community college. Community college is not going to help him really in this economy. I'll be honest with you. Okay, so they got to keep him secret. Do you think Paul's going to live up to his end of the bargain? I don't know. That Elvis statue is pretty lit. They were going to go bowling? Mm. That's what people used to do in the 80s. A lot of bowling. I mean, there was other things they did, very unsafe so things they did to teenagers at the time. Well, they're past teenagers. These people are like in their college years, so to speak. Even past college years, I'd say young adulthood. Look at this. They had to green screen the guys in teachers, the same actor playing him. Look at that afro. He's like right out of the 70s in the 80s film. Look at that. Papers to sign. What is he trying to do with his house? What is he trying to do? Why is his brother trying to do? Uh oh. His brother wanted to sign some papers, I guess, to fork over to his property. Uh, it looks like his brother is not very friendly to him. Uh oh. Oh, look at that. Look at the puppetry effects. It looks better this movie because obviously it's been remastered in high definition. So back when I used to watch this movie, uh, you know, it was like standard television effects. It would look more like that television right there. 
it would look very fuzzy and you couldn't really the puppet effects didn't hold up as well i guess you could say so as this cecil owns everything in this town it seems what is this he sells beef jerky too so he has cecil wine coolers which were big in the 80s beef jerky beef jerky was pretty popular in the 80s football they got footballs with glasses this way look at his shirt He's just trying to play up the lumberjack thing. Look at that. He's got a lumberjack shirt, the, the flannel shirt with the jeans. Uh oh. Look at this dude. This is typical dude, bro. He's playing hacky sack. Oh my goodness. It's proverbial stoner. Stepdad. That's a stepdad. 500 bucks? Why is it going to be loan 500 bucks? Probably is on something. He plays in tournaments. Oh boy. This guy. Look at this set. You could tell this is just a regular film set. Look at how much echo you hear. They were not very good at figuring out how to record things without, you know, they need like more rugs and a lot more curtains, a lot more stuff to absorb the echoes of the sound bouncing. Is he on something? Probably is. Wow, he's smacking him up. Oh, he kicked him in the, in the, uh, you know what? Wow. He beat the crap out of his stepson. That was literally child abuse, even though that stepson looks like you could just kind of right hook him and be okay. He looks too old to be a stepson, truly. So he's still angry at her for being a vegetarian? Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Is he being serious or is he being joking? I don't know. Wow, fully a fisher McDonald's. Why is it out? Are they deep frying beef fat? Is that true? You know who this guy reminds me of? Matt McConaughey? Matthew McConaughey? Uh, like the very, very early years of Days and Confused? Uh oh. That's gotta hurt, right? Clearly, that's got to hurt Wolf Face. Let's see what happens here. What is going to happen? Karma, karma. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Or what? It's going to try to hang him. That's not good. He's going to give him money if he defaults a job. What type of job is this to do? Oh my goodness. Is he going to say that phrase? Why is it Nurkog in the wheel? <laughs> That's kind of funny. He almost got it. Really? He almost killed him. Look at those fish tank, though. That fish tank is so murky. This dude don't know how to keep fish. Fish tanks shouldn't be that dirty, man. Is he overfeeding them? I think so. What type of fish are in there? Looks like a couple goldfish. I hope they took better care of those fish, actually. What's he doing? He's giving him a, a dirty magazine to read? The dude is not even of that species. What makes you think he's going to be into that? Uh-oh. These two look like uh, they're giving each other the eyes. Uh-oh. Is Arnold doing what you think he's doing, Wolfies? He's that pack's moving quite a bit there. I think Arnold's being very unsay so. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. I, I find it funny how they're calling themselves teenagers when clearly his dad was just telling him about community college. So if he's community co oh Arnold, did you really do what I think you did? This is very unsafe. So, look at this commercial. What's going on here, man? Look at that wig. Not him. Look at the woman. What's up with that hair? So, Cecil basically has multiple different businesses in this town. Western Beef Land. I can't believe they got away with saying that in this movie. Instead of calling it Western Beef, they called it Western Beef Land. That's funny. Oh, he hit him over the head. What is he? He's like going on a safari with that hat, right? Wild Kingdom. I think they're talking about National Geographic, I would assume. Uh-oh. 
Well, these two, they are um, very, very romantic with each other. Apparently, um, we didn't get to see the, the, the unsay-so type of details or they haven't even really gotten into it yet. Uh-oh, what, what's crawling in the sheets with them? Oh, nothing's crawling in the sheets. That's their legs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Put the door open there. Uh-oh, something now is definitely crawling in there. I think we know who it is, right, Wolfies? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's Arnold doing? Ah, she's disgusted. I can't blame him. He's just, like trying to cop a feel. That's not cool, man. You don't do that. That that's gotta be a mood killer, right? Look at it. Look, we finally got our first look at Arnold. Huh. Well, back to business, it seems. They weren't that faced by it. Interesting, interesting. But uh they left them unattended. These two screwballs look like they're trying to break in here. Does he have the key there? Oh my goodness. These two are definitely not a dynamic duo. What's going to go on here, you think? Sorry, man. This guy's straight out of dazed and confused. He's rummaging through the cupboards. Peter Pan, I'm surprised. That was actually a peanut butter brand back in the day. I don't even know if they still have that one. I'm surprised they were able to afford that brand for the movie. Quaker Oats they have here, too. I'm surprised they were able to afford to do the license for that, too. Look at the refrigerator. That's an old-school refrigerator. Uh-oh. He's trying to hide. He saw that he's getting noticed by people. Are they going to be able to catch Arnold, you think? Well, it's not going to be very hard to catch him, right? He's just... Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. He's trying to grab him like if he's trying to grab a rat of some sort, right? He got away. I was smacking him up again. Man, stand up to your stepdad. Give him a right hook. The guy's not very strong, he looks like. Even though he's a very powerful man in terms of owning everything in town, it seems. What are they doing? Did they tie a snack to the street? Yeah, they did. Why are they calling him Kitty? It's not a cat, clearly. Look at Arnold's facial design. Obviously, he's got a very fierce look to him. You're going to put him in a garbage bag? He'll suffocate, man. What are you doing? Uh-oh. Like, wouldn't that kill him? He's got no air in there. What are you doing, man? They tied it up, too. There's no air. He would die in the time that they're transporting him, would you not? Uh-oh. I guess they have uh, props for their... Uh-oh. What was that? They're just not even going to go check. Oh, goodness. Yep. See, this is what happens when you blow off your responsibilities for her. I'm surprised that he's not actually dead from that transporting. Oh, remember you said goof. So remember who called him goof? His, uh, his I guess, what would you call him, nephew? Look at this. The hacky sack festival. Well, it's gonna have to wait, bro. Yeah, he has kind of treated him. Uh oh, he's gonna hit him again. Oh, he threatened him with his actual life. Oh, he pulled the gun out on his stepson. Holy crap! Oh, you, you can't, uh, you can't really argue. With a guy holding a gun, can you, Wolfies? You just kind of got to go with it. Oh, why are you so mean to him? It's not his fault. What the heck is going on in those sheets? How are his... These two are into some really kinky stuff. This is foreplay? I, I don't even know. Oh, my goodness. Well, we know who was the... Kind of the, 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 the guy in that relationship, it seems. Clearly, it's not Paul. We got hit with another commercial here, so we have some time to, to chill here. So what do you think of the movie so far, Wolfies? It's corny, but it's kind of one of those popcorn type of films. You know, it's a, it's a little corny at times, but it's not that bad, right? You know, it's, it's an interesting experience. It's an interesting one, Wolfies. Is that... 
Danica Patrick is in this commercial that I'm watching. 20%. That's a, a very expensive cost. They're talking about car and repairs. I don't drive. It's a good thing. I mean, most of you have seen in when I drive an American truck simulator, like I don't need car insurance necessarily. <laughs> like if I had car insurance, my premiums would be up so much considering the amount of times I've crashed in the truck. Not that much, but some. Okay, we're back. Rated PG. This movie was like PG-13, truly. So I don't know why they put rated PG here. He's just playing with the, the pool table, man. Green stamps. What are green stamps? I don't actually know that term. Does anybody know in the chat? Uh-oh. He's running away? He should just go back. He wants to watch TV because he learned how to watch TV. Ooh. Why is he telling him to cut it out? It's just TV. It's not going to really do too much besides rot his brain. Hey, what are you doing? He just threw him. That would have killed the poor guy. He's lucky he's not dead, because if this anything happens to that guy, he's going to shoot him and stuff. He asked for that, did he not? Uh-oh. He's so angry at him. He's angry because he couldn't go to the Hacky Sack Festival. But it's not the poor little guy's fault. Leave Arnold alone. He's just a, you know, a rambunctious little creature trying to have fun, trying to watch TV. You know, you want him to just sit there and be quiet. This guy would not make a good dad or pet owner, that's for sure. Oh, uh-oh. The records. He slid across the rug with a record. This actually wasn't a bad special effect, so to speak. He's probably hurt. What's he doing? Why is he walking so slow? Oh, he tripped him with the pool stick. He's going to be pissed at him. Where is uh, Arnold now? He's trying to have fun with him, but this might come back to bite Arnold in the behind, don't you think, Wolfies? How do you get there? Because you can't usually climb up the pool tables that way because they have like the little sack thing now with the balls get deposited too. So that's kind of weird how he got there. It doesn't make sense from a story perspective. Because look, there's the, the little thing he didn't like chew into it to go up there. Uh, he's got him. He's gonna hit. What's he gonna do? He's gonna hit him? Why would you abuse the poor guy? Why, man? All he did was, oh, look at that. His claws came out. He's becoming angry. I would have messed with the guy if I were you. Oh, he's angry. He's not Mr. Nice Guy anymore. It's like his whole personality just shifted. Took a gun out? Are you kidding? Just for Arnold? Arnold pulled a knife. You know what they say? Never bring a knife to a gunfight. Uh oh. He's got to be careful. Arnold might get killed here. That wouldn't be good, right? Look at that, that fish tank. I can't get over how dirty the water is inside it. This is such a fake set. Look at this. Nobody's kitchen was like this in the 80s. Look at that phone. That phone's not even from the 80s. That's like from 70s type of thing. Oh, he just threw something at him. What was it? Like a fork that you use when you go... He shot him! Oh, poor Arnold. Arnold's got to be dead from that, right? He's not going to survive a gunshot. Right? Poor little guy's got to be not alive after that. Oh, look at that. He's got a bullet hole. He's going to be dead. Oh, he's healing. He's got Wolverine's mutant healing powers. He completely healed up there. That's crazy. Oh, he's biting him. That's not good. Oh, no. What's he doing? What did he do to him? He cut him into three different pieces? Well, 07 Arnold. You think Arnold's going to be able to come back from that? I doubt it. That doesn't look like he's going to be able to come back from something of that type of injury. I think it's it for a little friend, and poor little friend was getting abused by this guy. It's not his fault. It's not his fault at all. I'm I'm kind of really upset. He's drinking the wine cooler that Cecil was promoting before. Uh oh, what's going on? Is he gonna regenerate? What do you think happened to Arnold? Do you think he's alive still? Look at that hairdo. These guys are these two are right out of the seventies. Look at the newspaper. What does it say? Gremlin. They were taking a, a jab at the movie Gremlins. Baby Dude. Is his name actually called Dude? Oh, he's an adopted kid. Hmm. 
felt sorry because he was man that's rough uh-oh you see what i see wolfies looks like they multiplied so the munchies apparently they multiply when they're cut into pieces as opposed to like with the gremlins they multiply when they get wet and it looks like the things that multiplied off of him are not very nice like arnold was originally they even have names. Rudy? Who's this guy? Uh-oh, they multiply completely. And that must be... Arnold. Arnold now started talking. It's like his whole personality changed entirely. That's crazy. Well, they did, in the Aztec Temple, warn them, like, do not take this thing out of its... Oh, they're putting the volume up. He's going to die of ear. His finger got ruptured? Did he kill him? Did they kill him that way? Uh-oh. They just realized Arnold's missing. Well, you're going to community college, young man. That's what it seems like. Jokes, boom. Wait, what? Joe Mantana person impersonator? Married him almost? How long have these two been together? Uh-oh. Free basic in the Playboy Mansion. What a joke. Uh-oh. Looks like it's trouble in Honeymoon. What, who? What's going on here? Uh-oh. They're firing a gun. Uh-oh. So, there's four of them now. And they're like the gremlins in a way. They're trying to cause mischief. This is kind of trying to copy the Gremlins formula in terms of the movie. Look at that Cadillac. This is a nice Cadillac. Classic style Cadillac. You think the Cadillac's going to get it? Where are you going to keep them occupied? How is she going to keep them occupied? What is she doing? She's going to be seductive? Um, interesting. Oh, well, I guess they like the female anatomy, it seems. Uh-oh, they really are drooling. Oh, wow. Well, I can't lie. Those munchies, honestly, if I had Nadine doing that for me, I, I probably would be enamored, too. She was quite a looker back in the days. Still kind of quite of a looker for what I remember, because I was checking the IMDb's before the movie just to remember who the cast were. Uh, Arnold has a personality change, man. Is he going to shoot him? He shot the window instead. I wonder if Arnold had a lapse of conscience there. But, yeah, it's like a complete personality shift. Well, can you blame Arnold? He was abused. So Arnold obviously was going to, you know, kind of have a shift. Did you notice the license plate on the car, what it said? It says, oh, gizmo. That was another direct reference to Gremlins. Melvis. Obviously a direct reference to the character Cecil, who's trying to start like a Melvis land. They couldn't use, obviously, the word Elvis, so they changed the name to Melvis. How are they driving? So one, two of them are working the pedals, one person's playing like co-pilot, and the other one's just using a stick. So Arnold is driving. How can you not push any harder? Are they drinking and driving? You don't do that. That's very unsafe, so. Starsky and Hatch. There's a lot of references in this film. Wolfies, so interesting, interesting scenery. The, a New Jersey joke, because New Jersey back then was supposed to be a rough part of town. Uh oh, they're gonna get busted by the cop. The cop is not gonna like what happens to him right now. Hmm. He's trying to act bad cop. I don't think you want to act bad cop right here. Oh, he went after them instead of the the bad munchies. Ah, uh, that's going to be unfortunate. They're going to get taken to prison, maybe, here? Or is it going to give her an actual ticket this time? Oh, my goodness, this dude. This guy is, like, he's basically Dewey before Dewey existed in the movie universe. And his badge is still not pinned to the freaking police cap the right way. Look at his patches on his outfit. This is a terrible outfit. I don't know who even... Who even made this this costume? It looked like they went to the 99 cent store and picked up a police costume for this film. 
Is this gonna work? This can't work. Brewski, that's right, the Cold War was popular still. It was still going in 1987, so. Eagle Scout, that's all it took to, to brainwash this dude? What's it gonna do? What's it gonna tell him? Reason to believe what? Uh-oh. That's Cecil's property. Well, everything in this town Cecil's property, right? Oh my goodness, this cop is so gullible, is he not? How did that work? How did that work? Well, he's that gullible. Dakota ring, uh, interesting one. Dakota rings were a big thing in the 80s too because you could just get them out of like a cereal box. She's still reading the same paper? Has she ever turned the page? Doesn't look like it. What's the other thing that says on this opposite side of the paper? It's basically a pun on the... You, back in the 80s, there was these, like, newspapers. Not They weren't exactly the Inquirer, but they used to have, like, fake news stories, like, aliens found in New Jersey, and, like, the Wolfman really exists, or this kid was born with gills type of newspaper type of things. They were, like, fake newspapers that they printed some stories. Is that an Elvis song? Kind of sounds very similar to Elvis, and if not, it's like a mock Elvis song. They're ch they're gonna play chicken with this poor old lady. This looks like the old lady that was in the Toxic Avenger. I wonder if that actually is the case. Uh oh, I'm literally gonna run the old lady off the road here. What are you doing, Arnold? You were such a nice little creature at the beginning of the film. Notice how it goes completely a different direction with Gremlins. You know how Gizmo always stayed like the nice, kind little creature. Arnold had a complete change of focus once he got abused and then chopped up and his buddies came spawning she had dynamite in her car what type of old lady do you know just randomly drives around with yeah dynamite in the back seat in case somebody's messing with them i'll just throw a stick of dynamite like what what sensible person does that well oh they ran her off the road this is oh well she didn't die though at least not yet oh wait i stand corrected what are they gonna do Uh-oh. What are they going to do? That lady, I think, was in Puppet Master, if I remember correctly. She played the... Yes, yeah, that actress. She's actually in makeup. This is crazy. She was actually in Puppet Master, the first movie, as the... the, the worker of the person who owned the hotel. So it's crazy. It's here in this film. I didn't even know she was in it. They gave themselves the name. Hey, hey, we're the munchies. That's crazy. I didn't even realize that that was her. This is the first time I've watched this movie so many times. It's funny, after watching car movies so many different times, you eventually recognize certain actors. I didn't recognize because she was in a heavy amount of makeup. It's crazy that they got her for this film. He's there just guarding the border like nothing's going on. Is he going to pull back to see what the cop is doing? Security chemicals. Cave under factories? Are they dumping in toxic waste there? Huh. Why is he stockpiling toxic waste? He's recycling toxic waste? That's not good. People get cancer like that, man. What is he doing? And what? Ew, he, the beef jerky he's making is made out of toxic waste? Ew. He's processing? Neutralizing sauce? Oh my god, he's feeding the cows to toxic waste. His cows are being fed toxic waste. That means those cows are radioactive. This dude is... It's an evil businessman, Wolfies. I mean, I guess they were trying to parody, like, back in the day, fast food joints that used less than safe chemicals for their food. A lot of processed stuff that was, like, really junk. Holy crap, what happened here? Oh, that's right. The munchies messed up this place. Why is she screaming? Because the place is a mess? Yeah. Are the fish dead, too? It looks like the fish are dead in the tank. Uh-oh. 
What's going on? Well, I don't think this dude bro is okay anymore. Pretty sure the munchies gave him a comeuppance. Uh-oh. She's worried about all the damage stuff. Take a look at your son. Your dude is dead. Yep. Dude is dead. 07, dude. 07, dude. Dude, dude's not... The fish are dead. The, let's be honest. The fish were dead in that tank way before the munchies came here. That tank was so dirty, those fish were going to die on their own. It's not necessarily true that the munchies killed those fish. Uh-oh. Creature. You notice how they're not that torn up over the fact that dude bro is dead? Her stepson is dead, and instead of calling the coroner or anything, what are they doing? They're going to go call Eddie to deal with the munchies? Easy 8 Motel, because they can't call it uh, Motel 6, right? What is this? It's a biker gang? They're going to try to square up with a biker gang now? This is not going to go well. This is certainly not going to go well, right? They're not even really a biker gang. It's just like a bunch of kids on bikes, right? Are those even Harley Davidsons? They're kicking the car? Oh, they're brave, man. What did that guy's shirt say in the back? Does anybody? There's only one guy that's truly wearing a biker outfit. Look at that guy. That guy looks too old to be on a bike like that. It's got like a midlife crisis going on. He ran them off the road. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, but they fell into a pool. They'll be okay, right? Only one person so far has died technically in munchies. Dude. Oh, seven, dude. Uh oh, middle finger. That's, well, I technically not their middle finger. I guess that's their index. Or is it their middle finger? I wonder. Well, that's not very say so, the munchies. So you notice the movie's kind of paralleling some of the stuff that happens to gremlins, like they're just right now on their mischief arc. They're just creating harmless mischief where they haven't really killed anybody per se, only one person. They went to Melvis Land. Perfect July is the grand reopening. This guy is really still fell for this. He's just patrolling here like nothing. He's really just patrolling. Who's pulling up here? Uh-oh. What happened? Well, he finally... He finally caught on. Yeah, he did. Why are you trying to get dude's car? APB? He's not going to help them after all this stuff. This cop is worse than Dewey, confirmed. Does he... Sharp law, man. Hey, you got tricked by the Soviet thing just now. Covering up for dude. Why would he cover up with dude? They don't even like each other, probably. Uh-oh. This is getting more intense. Look who's there, Cecil. This is just going to get a mess all around. What's Eddie? What's poor Eddie? He doesn't even know, right? Oh, my goodness. Stop acting like a strong police officer, dude. This guy owns the whole town. He probably owns the police as well, right? Probably in his back pocket. He doesn't even know it does. Yep. That was his condo? That didn't even look like a condo, man. That looked like a cheap little house. He's trying to make it seem more than what it is. First murder? Why are you so... How do you not know that it's his house? Oh my goodness, that cop is so inept. Dewey has finally been redeemed in movies. Remember the first Scream where everyone's like, Dewey's so inept? This guy takes a cake compared to that. Dewey from Scream is what I'm talking about. Yeah, so... Bimbo. Don't call her Bimbo. Polyester Cowboy. Oh, they're going into an insult match. Dime store floozy. If anybody's a dime store floozy, it would be her, right? I mean, they look like they're straight out of like 70s. Real American. Was that a Hulk Hogan reference? I wonder. Space Street. He sells to the Russians? Oh, man. That's rough. You know, this guy's kind of reminded me of a certain guy who used to be the president of the United States. 
we'll just leave it at that because we don't want to get too political during this movie, right? But it's kind of ironic how many parallels there are to Cecil and certain person that's name begins with a T. All right, we got hit with a commercial there. I guess that's a good spot to have a commercial break. So uh, nobody has been able to catch up with the munchies just yet. The, comp the police force clearly in Sweetwater is inept. And then on top of everything else, we haven't seen the archaeologist scientist since the beginning of the film. You would figure he would have gotten some more scenes by now, right? But no, that does not seem to be the case, Wolfies. That does not. Give me one second, guys. Send an email when I have commercial. Okay, good, good. Uh, they're giving me a commercial for what is this? Hell's Kitchen, I think. Hell's Kitchen. Wow, he he got a, a upgrade. I remember when Gordon Ramsay didn't dress like this. He's like, oh, it's next level chef. Okay, oh, it's a two B show. I'm not going to watch that. I'm not really big into those type of cooking shows where they scream at the person. I don't like cooking shows in general. It's just not my cup of tea. Uh-oh. What, what's going on here? Uh-oh. Some scantily clad ladies. Clearly the munchies. Thanks to that Playboy. You give one munchie a Playboy or Dirty Magazine, and look, they can become horn dogs, man. This, a lot of the stuff that happened in this movie could have been prevented had simply Paul kept an eye on Arnold, didn't give him that naughty magazine, and, you know, just did what he was supposed to do. Hmm. I do not appreciate some of the way the women are being portrayed in this movie. Um, a lot of the themes in this film are going to be kind of, I guess what you could say is culturally insensitive by today's standards. Is one of her friends not wearing a bathing suit? Kind of is implied from that angle. Dude, well, I guess this sounds so small, everybody would know. Uh-oh, they jumped in the water? Are you, are, is it for real? Oh, no, she has a, a very low-cut bikini. Okay, that makes it sense. Uh-oh. That's not a piranha. Uh-oh. What is going on here? He stole his, her bikini. He's a pervert. How dare you, hentai. Hentai, dude. They broke her raft? Well, she knows how to swim, right? Uh-oh. They're ditching each other? They are. My god. The munchies have become real perverts in this movie. Uh-oh. Yeah, they stole the top. She ran away. She gave her a hug. Uh-oh. This girl better be careful. He went in with a bat. He's going to beat the pervertness out of them. This is the horny stick. They're hitting him with a horny stick, Wolfies. They're funny. Uh-oh. This is this movie has gone hilarious at this point. Uh-oh. That's probably not Arnold. Those, those girls are going to argue with each other. Cheerleading cam? Wow. They made those two stereotypical blondes. That's not Arnold, that's a skunk. Well, I mean, they went to the sewer area, probably. What were they? Tourists from Nevada. Are they going to believe that? They kind of went with that, I guess. All right, what's going on here? Uh-oh, we got a mean little kid. What was his name? Was he the name of the guy from Mad? That's what it looks like. He looks like the, the guy on the Mad magazines, too. Huh, where have I seen a scene like this before? I remember seeing a scene like this very similar in Puppet Master 2. Except the kid was, like, really mean to them. What are they doing? Are they just going to go in the ice cream shop? Uh-oh. Don't mess with those things, kid. You're not going to like what happens. I wouldn't do that for you. Uh-oh. Well, they're not super scared. Oh, almost. That dude that's wearing the ice cream hat, he was in a lot of B-horror films. So it's funny to see him in a cameo here. He had a lot of cameos in a lot of different B-horror films. I think he was in a Friday the 13th, if I remember correctly, too. Was a little bit old, uh, younger back then, though. 
They locked themselves in the ice storage, the refrigerator. He made his wife change the tire? What a jerk. That guy's a complete grade A a-hole, if you get what I mean, Wolfies. Why couldn't you do it, bro? Why are you with him? It's gotta be the gotta be the money, right? At this point. So the guy owns just about everything in town. Hmm. Do you think they're gonna finally catch up with the munchies here at this point? It's it's been basically a road trip trying to catch up with them. They stop for ice cream? They I cannot believe these two. Instead of going on the chase for Arnold, instead they went for ice cream and uh, they just kind of by plot device ended up where the munchies were, huh? It just so happens, convenient plot device is convenient, Wolfies. He's got a gun. Why does everybody have a gun in this place? Oh, he just got bit by one of them. Uh, throw him off, throw him off. I don't know which munchie that is. They all had names, but they never really said all their names in the film. He kicked him. Uh-oh. He just ricocheted. They ran out. They haven't killed anybody else besides dude, though. So. You're worried about the mess when your husband just got assaulted in the shoulder. Just a flesh wound, right? Just a flesh wound, Wolfies. Marge. Bob. Little Buddy Holly. That's the name they gave the kid. That's hilarious. What is he going to tell them now? Yeah, they were definitely aliens. Adults are joking. Oh, he passed out. He was mauled by a grizzly stone? Or a grizzly bear? And Yellowstone, yeah. Funny. I just created a place grizzly stone. They're from Nevada? And he just made a joke about Nevada. Uh-oh. anti new propaganda. It's true. They're making the joke about Nevada having nuclear testing. Well, back in the day, there was always that, allegedly. Mm hmm. They, where's the hospital? Red Coat Realty Clinic. This does not look like a legitimate clinic you should go to for medical attention, Wolfies. Man, they could not even afford the budget to take these people to a real hospital. That is so unfortunate. Look at the sign. That sign looks like you had somebody that was like in the fifth grade make that. Rather they just took them to the hospital like that. Stitches? Is, is this really? They wasted so much time in the movie just with that scene. It was like if they had to do a filler aspect. Wait, who's in, been sent to... Oh, that's right. Now they're back at the house. That's the morgue? But usually they don't take bodies in an ambulance to the morgue, usually. It's like an actual mobile that comes around. That's weird. Now she's upset about her, her dead stepson? Or adopted son? Remember at the beginning of the movie, like, she could give two hoots whoever her stepson was alive or not, they went to go chase the thing. Now she's distraught. Why? Because the cops were there? Because the ambulance was there? Is it for, like, fake perceptions? I wonder, Wolfies. Huh. What is the commercial now? America Youth? Video Arcade. He's... He's a fan of video games, at least. So Cecil's not that bad of a guy. Right? So he, he opens arcades and stuff. Because they're radioactive. You no, know, maybe Cecil's not that bad, Wolfies. Solar Moon. Proposition 61. We want them all. For our kids. He wanted the kids to spend the time at the mall. Better tomorrow for Mall's committee. Uh, he's a real piece of work, I suppose. Oh, I don't know. They probably 
considering the way America has been, they probably would vote for Cecil in this day and age, Wolfies. Uh, I kid you not, probably. Wait, are, th are they going to fornicate instead of trying to figure out how to find Arnold? So, you know, I'm an Omtrix? Fire of the Gods, what's the Fire of the Gods? Regenerative powers. So that's basically Arnold. He's a god. Fire of the gods. Well, either fire. Hmm. So we got something. We've kind of got some foreshadowing about their power. Hundreds of munchies stealing junk food. You know why? That's a plot from Gremlins. There are hundreds of Gremlins at the Contestor Sand the movie theater. No smoking, no spitting, no fighting, no fishing, no drinking. Seems like a decent amount. Oh, look what they're doing. They're smoking and drinking. Where did they get the beer from? Well, it's a mini golf course. Golf? Mini golf was really popular in the 80s too, right? So, oh, they're going to cause chaos here, I'm assuming. But there's not much they could do. Where is he? He just got dipped into the water. This is their way of trying to create chaos without spending a lot of money in the film budget, I suppose. Uh-oh. What happened to the laugh there? Looked like there was supposed to be a laugh. They could not afford a lot of money, uh, a lot of stuff in this film, budget-wise, so look what they're having to entertain themselves with. This is supposed to be, like, them creating chaos, when in reality it's just them kind of goofing off like any little kid would do. They got swords. Look at the, how big those swords are. You see? They're rubber swords. They're, like, rubber bouncing off there. They're not actually, like, if they were real swords, they'd be cutting each other to multiply, right? You would think so. Yeah, they're fake toy swords. A raft. They're just really trying to pad out the movie in terms of plot right now. All right. And now he's giving her a foot massage. I, I still never will understand within this movie how now she's like so upset. And before she was like just fine with it to go and run out. Is it like the guilt hit her all of a sudden? Oh, now he's trying to fornicate with her? Everybody in this town, like, is... What the hell happened? Who is this? The actual chief of police. Uh, that's a good point. The place is destroyed. Do you notice the continuity error? I do. Look in the fish tank. Well, she's blocking it. But if you look at the fish tank, there's still fish swimming in that fish tank. Look carefully. There's an actual fish in that tank that's swimming, Wolfies. Continuity error. An actual fish is swimming in the fish tank. In the tank where all the fish are dead. Damn, they couldn't even take the fish out of the fish tank, could they? That's just so silly. Well, this chief of police is a gut nut, apparently. Uh-oh. So that's why he doesn't want the creatures there. Well, so he's going to make them come down there. Oh, because he's helped cover it up. How did they break in? He doesn't want to hear it. Uh-oh. Everybody's all over the place. Golf land. Ah, uh, you know what's going to happen at golf land at this point, right? Yeah, he's not going to listen to you. He doesn't even care about you, nephew. He made tea? We're kind of dude that's a cop just kind of makes some tea in the kitchen like that. Like, shouldn't you be looking for, like, any sort of evidence to try to track these things down? I'm surprised they were even able to play that song for this film. So they couldn't afford a lot of stuff on the set, but they had enough time to afford, you know, the one of the national anthems of the United States. I, I just don't understand, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean... Look at this golf course. We haven't even seen anything but that little area for this golf course. So did they even film this film in an actual mini golf place? I, I'm assuming no. He's giving a speech. When do you cut a pink ribbon at a ceremony that's opening? It's usually you're cutting the red ribbon, is it not? Or blue ribbon? Usually it's a red ribbon though, right? Because it's like a grand opening. Can I afford a red ribbon for this film? How is, it, how is this dude from the ice cream place already magically healed up from the stitches? Wouldn't they have given him rabies shots? And wouldn't he not be leaning in for kiss? Because that would, like, rip the stitches. Neurocontinuity error. 
Look at these two. She was in movies. The blonde that's next to a couple of horror movies. She was a victim in a couple of them. Hmm. What is he saying? Melvis. Is that the name of his wife, Melvis? So this golf course is dedicated to her? Why is she called Melvis? He just did something naughty. He touched her backside. You think the cop and her are having an affair? Because she didn't like look at him like, I did not consent to that. What is he doing? Why are they taking a screwdriver? They're going to try to sabotage this? Miniature golf. Is miniature golf 36 holes? Open. But didn't it say grand reopening? So did the plot just magically change where now it's the official opening? I, I'm so confused. Did they not even realize in the script the continuity error there? Get out there and putt-putt. It doesn't look like... You know what it looks like? It looks like they rented a, a park and just put a couple of fake little golf things in the area. Uh-oh. Fan service there. Well, we know the munchies are very, very horny little guys, right? So wherever there is uh, women, they will apparently get up to mischief. And wherever there's food to eat, they will eat food. Man. These guys are about as horny as... Twitch viewers when they're watching loot streamers on Twitch. Could you not? Look at them. They're drooly, man. Man, that, that's a gross. Uh, poor, poor little... What was his name? Buddy Holly? Probably Holly with a Y, right? Because they're not going to call him Holly with a... Or Holly with an I, probably, right? Are they going to terrorize him again? This poor kid. He, he was able to get... Escape them once. Maybe not now. Oh! Look at that. He just popped up. Is that Arnold? Arnold looks like he's even more angry than the last time. It's like as the film's progressing, Arnold's getting more and more aggressive. Is he really that deranged? Has his incident with humans really ruined it for him? Uh-oh. Dad, you better listen. This guy is going to get beat up again, you think? McPar. How are you? You got stitches in your shoulder, and you went to go golf with your swing. When your shoulder hurt so much, you wouldn't be able to swing? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This poor dude. Oh, there we go again. Mold yet again by the munchies. Is he going to die this time? She sprayed hairspray? Well, I guess that's one way to get rid of them. That's bad for the environment, though, Missy. Very, very bad for the environment. It is really is in his day. Poor dude. Uh, why did they cut it off there? Is it bad, Bob? We got a commercial, please. Well, hopefully it won't be a very long commercial this time. That's, I feel bad for Bob. Bob is having a very rough day. You know what? He got mulled by the munchies. Then what he wanted to do was just simply go and, you know, just kind of engage in a sense of putt-putt, you know, do a little bit of mini golf. And poor, poor, you know, Bob. Just getting mold all over the place here. In our commercial, Instacart. I've used Instacart a couple times. It is kind of handy for when you can't really get to a supermarket to buy things. The only problem is, like, sometimes the people at Instacart will get, take pictures to show you exactly what they're going to get you. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes you get people from Instacart that don't even want to get the stuff that you want. They'll say it's not there because they don't want to carry. Mm -hmm. I've used it a couple times. Pretty handy service. I feel like it's better... For, like, people who can't really leave their house for whatever reason. Maybe, you know, they're immobile and stuff. I think that's what originally Instacart was, but... It was a cool concept, though, I think. I think this should be our last commercial. I don't think you're probably not going to get the same commercials as me, perhaps. I don't know what commercials were on during this. Huh. But, yeah, you know, it's kind of funny. We're getting close to the end of the movie, though. We're at an hour and two-minute mark right now, in case you're trying to queue up with me still. So we're at an hour and two minutes... This is an hour and 32 minute movie. So we got roughly 30 minutes left in the film. And then we would bid Fond Farewell. I know it's a shorter film, but I wanted to do one that I was really interested in watching, that I could give a lot of insight for. Something that I think you would enjoy because of how corny it is. That we could critique. You know, this movie's so bad it's good though, in my personal opinion. Hmm.
What? Oh, they screwdriver to break into the vending machine. So you broke the vending. Enjoy those radioactive snacks, kids. Oh, they were not expecting that. Oh, don't stab it. Don't stab it. Oh, guess what? Did he get cut? Because if he got cut, that's going to multiply more munchies. Uh -oh. They're all running. I guess the munchies have invaded the putt putt course. Mini golf. This cop is play. Why is the cop playing stream be patrolling? Uh oh. Well, Eddie's right behind you. Man, the, the cop the cops in this town are very inept. So even the, the chief of police and his son are completely inept. This is not gonna be good for uh this town whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Why do we having this banter between these two? Take care of them. Why is he screaming them? Oh, because they broke into the vending. He's putting instead of investigating the issue. I guess because they broke into the vending machine, so he feels like that's their punishment. Poor dude. He doesn't look like a sea stray. He's probably losing a lot of blood. Sway seven hole. That is the most awkward conversation to have between these two. She's going to give them a lift to the clinic. She is such a nice civilian in this town. God bless the ice cream lady. She is doing God's work, so to speak, some might say. Instead of investigating, they're still playing mini golf. These cops. Yeah, I'd be angry at Ed, too. What are you doing, Ed? See? Look at that. Yep, yeah, I agree. Uh, well, at least Melvis is very say-so, I suppose, even though she don't dress very say-so. Oh my goodness, these two cops are not going to do much for this town. Look at that. They can't even cover each other the right way. The fate of this town is up to these cops? I don't think so. Okay, maybe you should listen to him. Maybe just a bit. Yeah, they will multiply. You should listen. Well, Melvis is at least have an open mind to things. Uh-oh. That guy's wearing like a hat that looks like an elf from freaking Christmas, does he not? They shot him. That's not really going to do much, though. Is Ed going to get mauled here? Oh, there's another one. He's got a golf ball in his hand. Oh, there's two more. Where did they get the tiny little glasses from? I wonder. Where did they get any of these props? Like, when they multiplied, some of them had it on their hand. Uh-oh. Is it me, or is, does Arnold look more ravenous before? Like, if he's actually got rabies. Oh, they're throwing golf balls at them. It's not really going to hurt them. He's going to cut them? No, don't do that. Did you not listen to your nephew? No. This is bad. There's going to be a whole bunch of them now. I chopped his head off. That That's good. Even they said it. You don't know what you're doing. Thank you. It's just going to make more of them. He's going to be like, yeah, I got it all under control. Well, look look now, man. Turn around. Look what you just did. You multiplied them. So how many of them are there now? There were four before. They got cut into four pieces. Two times each. Seven. There's more than seven. How does the math work there? Didn't he chop up two of them? So, the first time they chopped one, it made four. Or three of them, technically. So the next time they chopped... Okay, three. Yeah, the math is right. The math is right. Okay, I thought maybe there's continuity or... Hmm. Oh, he's... He's conscious of his male pattern boldness. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. We don't make fun of people, you know, going bold. Being a cop is a stressful job, I would assume, so it's very easy to, you know, ruin his uh, hair. Why are they going to jail? They didn't do anything. Are they going to con this guy yet again? She's seducing him. Uh-oh. I think her seduction powers are working. Well, I'll be honest, I really have the cop's position. I'd probably be kind of falling for Nadine as well. That is kind of category of Jiren type, I would say. 
definitely that type of aesthetic is very appealing to my eyes. Look at that Clint Eastwood. sword. They're in the video store. You know why they're in the video store? That's a direct reference to Critters 2, the scene in the video store. So there's a lot of like nods to our movies that came out at this time period. Uh oh, he's gonna fall for this, right? He's he's bound to fall for it. Why is he trying to act so tough? Here's my thing: Why would you try to shoot your shot with a girl whose boyfriend is clearly in the car with you, like, and he's literally trying to shoot a shot? Man, no honor amongst thieves, truly. Like, I don't condone that you should do that at all, Wolfies, but, you know, it is what it is, I suppose. Take out, they're hungry, they want, like, pizza. Huh? Well, Clint Eastwood went through there. That's funny, I'm surprised that they could afford the money to show the Clint Eastwood dirty, I don't know, was that a Dirty Harry movie? I don't remember a lot of his cowboy movies. So, not Dirty Harry, Dirty Harry was the cop, right, for Clint Eastwood? I forgot what his cowboy movies were. Mm hmm. Let's see. Well, so the seduction didn't work, but clearly the video store being broken was enough to get him to not take them to jail. Throwing cassettes at them. Were they looking for dirty movies, perhaps, at this video store? So the munchies don't seem to understand that they keep those movies and video stores in the back, not in the front. They're in a back area with a curtain sealed behind. Oh, crap. They, tried to attack. they electrocuted him. Uh-oh. What happened? It turned into a statue. So, what does that mean? The fire of the gods is electricity. It makes sense because when lightning comes down, it creates fire. So, they can stop the munchies by electrocuting them. Convenient plight device, right? Very convenient plot device, I suppose. Well, that's how we found the weakness to the munchies. Kind of weird that had to happen in the video store, though. They're going to go to the dry food before they go to the, the underground area. He knows a lot about Melvis. A little bit foreshadowing. His son was shooting his shot with uh, the character in the her. And now the father is shooting a shot with a girl or woman who's already married to somebody. Hmm. A little sussy there, I'd say, Wolfies. They found the underground area? Yeah. A sleazy one. Role model? Why would you be after Cecil? Did they break the handcuffs on their own? What was that? So, what was that, though? It was like a friendship person or something? And where's that candy? I guess they're going to realize the toxic waste barrels, right? Like, tell me you recognize that there's a whole bunch of toxic waste barrels in front of you. Do they not realize this? Are they that oblivious to light? Oh, look at that. Tarantula. Um, that, if it bites you, will probably kill you, so I would be careful. Yeah, he's he's about to poop his pants. A little help. Some cop he is. Some copy is. Is she gonna knock it off? She literally picked it off without getting bit. She is the bravest person in this film. Change my mind. The bravest. It's all right. What a brave cop he is, right? In in the line of duty, he is truly gonna save the day. Worse than Dewey. I never thought I would run into a cop character in a horror film that was worse than Dewey in Scream 1. And here we are. Wait, there's gonna Scooby do it? And he's not gonna go with his girlfriend? Uh, does he not want his girlfriend to be in danger? Yeah, well, I mean... God bless the cop. He's just trying to be one of the, the crew members here, right? You always need the comic relief in a Scooby-Doo type of gang situation. Yeah. It's seven of them concurrently? Well, six now because one got electrocuted, right? Uh-oh. What is this? This is the burger place? No eating on the job, no smoking. Cecil loves you. 
Aww. Okay. This is different. Oh, come on, man. This is culturally insensitive by today's standards. Uh, he's even making short jokes. That's not cool. I know they did it so that the person that gets killed here or gets messed up will, you know, basically be hated. He does have socialization problems, too. These free actors actually were in certain films and horror films, I believe, if I remember correctly. How does she know someone? They, those two are having an adulterous affair, probably. Oh, they ran away. You know what that means. Well, the jerk of a manager that was bullying um, little people has met his fate. So two people have been killed in this film now. Kill counts up to two. Do you copy? Why is this solar shakes? I wonder why he's so obsessed with solar technology. And he doesn't even use solar technology in this film. All right. As he's looking for his order. You're not going to get your order, man. He's going to be angry and bust in there, maybe? You getting no food tonight? And he really... He's going to care in it, isn't he? Because he owns the chain. night manager look at the prices though at least they're affordable even though the food's radioactive it's like five dollars for me for a burger it's not bad decently priced in the 80s well the lights went out was sting gonna come from the rafters uh oh what happened what happened to him oh his pants got ripped up did you do an incredible hulk no that's the munchies and they escaped down into the sewers. Yep. Plot device. They had to kind of extend the scene as much as possible. Yeah, you're not going to get food tonight. No food for you. Back in the mines. Poor Paul. Just running around there looking for something. I still don't understand why they, like, don't realize that there's radioactive waste everywhere. He's going to shoot a shot again. Come on, bro. It's never going to happen. Don't do that. You never do that as a guy. You never try to talk somebody out of, like, being in a relationship with a boyfriend. That's just not cool. Uh -oh. She's entertaining him, too. That's so bad. Special weapons expert. Is that even a real thing? Hot patch for life in a small little town as a deputy? I don't think so. Wow, poor guy. He is so dumb. He doesn't understand nuns cannot consummate anything whatsoever. And how would she be able to become a nun anyway? She had to enter into a vow of chastity, which I don't think she would be able to do. Obviously, she would be being sarcastic, but still. Well, this is a part of the movie that is kind of dragging a little bit because there's not much left to it. So they're just kind of like extending the plot as long as they could to get it to the actual runtime. So, let's see what happens here, Wolfies. The Scooby-Doo gang is still split up. I'm assuming at some point these minds are going to meet up with each other. He's getting jumpy again. Oh, he knocked himself out. Are you, are you for real? Cop of the year, right? Cop of the year. Yeah, that's not going to work. Yep. Yep. Nope. Nope. Not gonna work. He gave himself a concussion, probably, at this point. Yeah, it's not happening. Why do you need this cop anyway? She's... He's very net. Nope. Nope. Not even that. For coffee. Yeah. When you don't want to deal with somebody, you take them out on a coffee date, Wolfies. Alright, what's gonna happen here? He's, he's out cold. He got a concussion, right? Almost certainly at this point. So it becomes a question of, will they be able to... Uh-oh, she met up with the munchies. That's not going to be good for them. See what happens here. She, she's using pockets as she kicked 
kicked some sand in his eyes. Oh, it's all of them, right? Man, she's gonna have to run. Run, Cindy, run. Are they gonna ignore the cop or are they gonna kill the cop, I wonder? Run, 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 run for your life, Cindy. Uh-oh. See, she's still hungry, man. She's gonna nag him all the way through. She squeeze. Eyeballs itch. If you eat anything that makes your eyeballs itch, that's probably not good to eat. Maybe that's why this... Maybe this is... Maybe this cop is uh, kind of dumb because of that. Literally toxic waste right there. Literally labeled toxic waste. Nobody's like even batting an eye at this point. Well, let's see what happens here, Wolfies. How does he wake up for him, but he doesn't wake up for Cindy? Well, Eddie is uh, disposed at the moment here. Run, 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 run. Don't close the elevator. Oh, she's screwed. And they're coming after her. She better look for, like, some type of electrical supply or something to be able to survive. Oh, boy. What is she going to do? Is she going to have to climb the whole mine shaft? She was able to get back into this. Oh, okay. She's going to have to shut the lid. But what is she going to do? Oh, they cut the... They cut the power to the elevator, but here's my thing with that. If they cut the power to the elevator, wouldn't there be sparks and wouldn't they have been electrocuted and turned into a statue? Did they forget their, like, plot device that they created for the weakness of the munchies? Well, we got a commercial there. That was kind of convenient. It was in the middle of a conversation, though. A little bit annoying, but hey. Sponsors got to pay the bills somehow for this particular movie. I think this will probably be the last commercial break before we get into the meat and the potatoes of uh, the rest of the movie. This is where the climax for the film is gonna be coming up. I do have this movie on Blu-ray, but I do understand that watching it would uh, cause an issue because I know the way you could watch it for free was with Tubi or Amazon. Oh, he gave the massage to the wrong person. Okay, that was kind of a silly joke. Cheese squiz, look at that. That does not look like that's tasty. Ironically, there's probably a lot of food plant things that are not good for you to eat so this is kind of a little bit of satire actually what goes on even then they're clearly not using toxic weight uh oh that's arnold arnold has become one really mean creature yeah elevator's dead he's gonna have to climb the stairs if he wants to save her they're in the warehouse now yeah uh oh she better run she's running out of places to run too she gotta lock herself in the storage oh she got trapped in the storage room Typical movie plot device here, Wolfies. What's she going to be able to do? Uh, oh, they gave up that quickly? I don't think all of them would, right? Yeah, there's always that one that's going to stay behind. We appreciate that little dude's tenacity. That's not Arnold, though. It's one of the er guys. I wish they would have given them names and they actually called them by names throughout the film because it would have kind of helped to give them some type of individuality. Like, the movie has a lot of good plot points, but some of it is terrible execution. Some of it's just, like, terrible execution due to the restraints on the budget, right? Huh. So, those guys stayed behind. She's going to have to deal with this one on her own, so... The heroes are going to have to deal with their fates by themselves. Uh-oh. That one's the one that speaks French? Did we have one that speaks French? Or did he just learn French at the end of the movie, it seems? What she didn't do? She's gonna try to close the window, maybe. Well, this is a perfect opportunity to deal with them, but I don't know how he's gonna figure this one out. Uh oh, what are they doing? Oh no! You know what that does, right? Oh, it cuts them in half. He's trying to create more munchies. He's gonna create a whole bunch of that's Arnold that's doing it. He became so evil as the movie progressed. Oh, there's more of them now. The puppet effects kind of towards the end of the movie kind of went downhill quite a bit. Like, there weren't spectacular puppet effects to begin with. It's kind of like not as much as like a Muppet would. Uh oh. Obviously, the Gremlins effects way, way more, and they had animatronics, but uh oh. What's going to happen? He has an idea. What is he going to do? He cut down, he cut the power. That's good, but you need to figure out something else to do, right? So, how many more of them are there now at this point? What's he doing? He's plugging that in. Does he have an idea? 
You better get like an outlet of some sort. Oh, he's gonna chop the electrical outlet. Oh, okay, okay, I see what he's doing. I see what he's doing. He's using some science. He doesn't need community college after all. He's got a, a bright idea there, Wolfies. Uh, what is she gonna do though? Because she doesn't have anything to really fight back with at this point, right? Oh, he's, he's enamored by her beauty. What's she gonna do? Use a broom? That, oh, well, that kind of gave them a concussion, but that's not gonna solve your problem as to what you do in terms of getting out of there. Uh-oh. What's gonna happen? Oh, no. Uh-oh. Ah, I got caught up in the thing. That's not good. He got caught up in, like, the table area. He's, he's screwed. He's gonna have to unrival that. Don't try to pull it that way. Just go back and... Oh, well, good thing this is a area where everything's falling apart. He got three of the munchies. They're electrocuted, them. Was that all of them? It looked like that was all of them, except for one that jumped away. She's still... How is she gonna deal with this one, though? She's trying to open the door. She's gonna need, like, something... Something electrical to be able to deal with it, right? She's gonna be able to break free? She did. She's actually smart. Good job on her part. She made, like, a makeshift... Okay, that was all of them except one, okay. Good to know, good to know. So there's two left. Arnold and the one that was saying Manchere. So... Technically, there's two left then. Because all she did was hit it with a shovel, that's not going to kill it. That's a plot point. Maybe a plot hole? There's Arnold. Uh-oh. That's not good. He's really, really angry. He's so vicious. I have to do something with this one, man. Climax of the film happening right now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Gotta do something. Or he threw him into electricity. Well, that's the end of Arnold. That's supposed to be the climax of the film. There's a big plot hole because the one that she hit with the shovel didn't get electrocuted, so he shouldn't have died. So... Did the people who wrote the film forgot that? Well, that's all that's left of Arnold. He was a nice guy that got a victim of circumstance. He was abused by dude, and thanks to being abused by dude, that set everything in motion. Had Paul been responsible and watched him, a lot of stuff would not have happened in this film. Oh, see, they were having a fair. I told you that. They've been smooching it up. Ah, uh, good for you. Wow, that guy... Cecil's so oblivious, too. They were smooching up and making out where he was... Wow. Wow. That, that's some funniness to it. But there was technically one munchie that didn't get killed. And we're just going to ignore that, it seems. That's so weird. Dad who? It's your dad, bro. Oh, my goodness. Open the door. There's an emergency switch. Yeah, hit it. There's an arrow? Dude. Airside? What airside? Oh, there's that one. Okay. So they got out. She's acting dizzy, but she's dizzy because they were smooching things up. I took care of most of them. Interesting. So what's going to happen? What is that? asbestos so he's been feeding yeah now the truth comes out uh oh so all those things he's killing people literally poisoning them we have toxic waste harmless how's it harmless what secret neutralizing mix probably doesn't even use a secret neutralizing mix in my opinion He's trying to now give him a job. Sponge cake division. Endangered species. He's killing endangered species. He punched him. Whoa. Knocked him out. I had a good right hook. Oh, sweetheart. He's going to arrest too? He's arrested Kim though. Oh, he didn't know that the food was poisoned? 
Uh-oh. Are well, the cops actually doing his job? So who's going to run Sweetwater now, though? Linda Blair. Wow, that's an old joke reference. Most of you Wolfies wouldn't even be able to understand that. Wow, so they're all friends again? Oh, this movie really ends weird now that I think about it. Well, that's it. With the munchie that got hit by the shovel, though, what happened to that one? Do we completely ignore there was one or munchie that's running around that factory? Maybe that was the hope for the sequel. There is a sequel. I will talk a little bit about that at the end of the movie, but it's like a very loose sequel. So. Yeah. That's the researcher that that guy talked about in the beginning of the movie. Oh, what's this? A statue? The statue. So he's going to be interested in that. Let's see what happens here. He's going to investigate it. What's going to happen? $25,000. That would solve his financial problems, right? Yep. Take it. He's from the, the Natural History Museum in New York? Probably not. But what about his book deal? What about his book deal? What about his book deal? What is he going to do? Yeah, the sample, the green sample. So what was it? This whole movie is about toxic waste. Alien toxic waste dump. So were those creatures created by toxic waste from alien toxic waste? Or were those creatures the aliens and they were dumping toxic stuff? I wonder. Well, this is the funniest line in the movie. Don't go to college. A good mind is a terrible thing to waste. It's funny, though. Well, their financial problems are solved. This guy gets to do his comedy routine. And they're going to live happily ever after and move to L.A. Interesting. And that little guy is in the back of the truck. Uh-oh. What's this? Looks like Terminator. Oh, look at that. Lightning hit the statue and he got resurrected. Again. But this time he seems nice. All right, Wolfies. That was Munchies. Now, there is actually a sequel to this film called Munchie. We're not going to watch that one. Because I do not... It even cut off the credits there. We are not watching Munchie. Munchie is bad. So, that was the movie Munchies. The original one. There is a sequel called Munchie. Uh, where it's kind of like made for children, so to speak, where the character is like a mythical imp type creature, and we're, I'm assumed, led to believe it was either Arnold's character reconned or the munchie that was in the underground area that managed to escape. In that munchie movie, it's just like a comedy film thing where he tries to grant magical wish for the kid, but he's kind of inept and does like a whole bunch of things that go backwards. I think that character Munchie was voiced, if I remember correctly, by Dom DeLuise. We're not going to watch that movie because that movie is incredibly horrible. But with that being said, that is the end of Munchies. It was a film that was made to be a Gremlins ripoff. It's not a great movie. It's not a bad movie. It's a so bad, it's a good type of movie that has its moments and has its fun. Uh, special effects obviously don't hold up as well as the movie Gremlins, but it's still better than a nerd Gremlins knockoff by the name of Hobgoblins, which I think some people have seen it. Some people probably haven't. I might, might, if I can find a copy of the movie to watch where we can all watch on a streaming service, watch the movie Hobgoblins at some point because that one's a nerd really so bad that it's good type of film. With that being said, let's look at the schedule for today. What's left over here where we still have some time. I hit the wrong image here. Give me one second here because that's the one that's attached to the movie. Uh, let me see. Do I have it? Oh, it's not in this one. We'd have to go into just shank. Well, tomorrow we are going to be playing on the channel at 9 a.m. Eastern Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak because we haven't played that one for a while. So we are going to be playing Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. I might do more movie nights in the future. It's not going to be every Friday night. It's just going to be whenever I am kind of feel like watching a movie. I know that Godzilla minus one. I'm going to move myself a minute because I'm kind of getting a little bit of a late cramp there. So please pardon that while I readjust. 
But the movie that I'm going to be watching eventually is I heard that Godzilla Minus One is going to be coming out on streaming services soon. I know on Japanese Amazon, the Japanese without English subtitles is going to be available to watch. Obviously, I'm located in the Americas. I'm hoping that we're going to get an announcement that there's going to be a way to watch uh, Godzilla Minus One on American streaming services pretty soon. I'm waiting for Godzilla X Kong New Empire to come out. There's a couple of films that were out a while ago that are now going to be hitting streaming services pretty soon. I believe Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2. I actually can look this up because I have my comp open up in the background here. Should be dropping pretty soon on streaming services. Uh, it's had like a very small theatrical run. So I'm hearing for the grapevine that this should be hitting streaming pretty soon because the theatrical run is pretty much over. At this point, I actually heard really good things about the sequel. Some people are even saying that it's a upgrade. It's still kind of going through a Fathom event theatrical run, but it should be running into Peacock, if I'm not mistaken, in the not too distant future. So that's something that I'm definitely interested in watching on the channel. Uh, and there might be one or two movies here and there in terms of anime that are going to be making streaming service appearances. So there is more things I want to watch. I'm thinking at the moment I'm probably going to do a movie watch along maybe once a month. Um, unless, like, I feel really in compelled to do some. But I hope you enjoyed the movie. Let me know if you enjoyed the movie here. Uh, if you have movie recommendations, I always am a fan of So Bad That's Good. And things that are not super unsay so. Like, I know some people have recommended The Toxic Avenger, which I have seen that movie. I did grow up around that time period. But the movie itself is very, 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 very unsay so. It's a trauma movie, and that's not everybody's cup of tea. I'm worried about showing a movie of that nature on here. Now, obviously not streaming the movie itself, but like having some people watch it because we like for everyone, I try to be for the most part. And that movie has its moments. It's it's it, it's it's an acquired taste type of movie and its humor and how it portrays various different things in it can be considered very insensitive to a lot of people. And it might just be like offensive type of material. It has been recommended to me. I don't think we're really going to do it. I do know that the remake did come out or at least was screened and i know that some people are very unhappy about it but if we can find like if that comes to streaming services i might be more inclined to watch the remake there and react to that one but only time will tell but definitely send your recommendations as to things you think i would be interested in i don't guarantee that i'm gonna watch it on stream and you know react to it and do the movie watch along with it but do you know we're always open to the suggestions and we take a look at certain things and if it's something that's kind of up my alley and i think it's something that everybody would be interested in watching then we can definitely play ball with that but with that being said it is time for us to go because i'm not going to pay for another movie ticket here wolfie for all of you here today at this movie theater because you know movie tickets are pretty expensive and you know concession stamp prices are pretty expensive as well so with that being said you don't have to go home but you can't stay here i will see you tomorrow at 9 a.m eastern for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Till next time, Wolfies.